Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Welcome to Community Voices First, People's Assembly on the Housing Crisis. Woo! My name is Kevin Buchanan. I'm a CBH Power Member Leader. I um, would like to tell you why we're here, first of all. We're here tonight to present the proposal for truly affordable housing. I know that each and every one of you are here and very interested in that subject, and we hope that you leave here tonight fulfilled with information and fulfilled with power. My name is Kendall Buchanan. I don't know if I said that a minute ago. And uh, as I watched this uh, room filled tonight, I couldn't help but uh, think about some very important quotes, some quotes that I heard throughout my life. Quotes from a very important person. Quotes like, The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. Quotes like, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Quotes like, Life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? Quotes like, our lives begin to end the day that we become silent about things that matter. Quotes like, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Quotes like, we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. These quotes are from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. One day, our children might have to, and first of all, I'd like to know how many people out here own all homes. How many people out here own homes and don't pay rent? There are only a few. We have mostly people here that pay rent. The ones that aren't here, I commend you because you do not feel a robbery to come out and support the many people here tonight that need your help. <laughs> Give yourself a round of applause. One day your children and my children might have to look for an apartment. They might have to pay rent. And unless we address these problems now, they won't be looking for those things in Austin, New York. Mm. But that's enough about why I'm here. Why are we here? We're here tonight because Austin is our home and we're being priced out. When we say Austin is our home, what do we mean by our? Our means the one in four families in Austin who make less than $35,000 a year. Our means the African American community that has been here since the 1800s. Mm. Our means the Latino community that make up nearly half of our population. of hard-working families that pay over a third of their income on rent in Austin. To these comrades, we say, yes, Austin is our home. Who's home? Our home. Who's home? Our home. Who's home? Our home. Right. In Austin's housing policy statement, our trustees and our mayor expressed concern that due to the rising cost in living, the diversity that this village is so proud of will diminish if the action is not taken to create and preserve affordable housing. We're concerned too. We're concerned 
that our families are forced to live in substandard, sometimes life-threatening conditions for market rate rents. We're concerned that housing, like Claremont Gardens, that once was affordable, is now market rate. We're concerned that we see luxury developments coming in, such as Avalon and Harbor, Harbor Square, which include only a small number of units affordable for people making over $58,000. This housing is not for us. It is for well-to-do families and young professionals, not for us. To this I ask, Will we let Ashley be their home and their home only? Do we let Ashley become a place only for the wealthy? No, because Ashley is our home. Who's home? Our home. Who's home? We are. Right. As members of the Community Voices Heard Power Osme, we believe we can challenge ourselves to create a place for all of us to live in dignity right here in the village that we call home. CBHP Osme is a local chapter of a statewide member-led organization of low-income residents working to build power to fight for social, racial, and economic justice in our community. And now I'd like to bring up some CBH power members who have been building this campaign. First, I'd like to bring up Nadine Murray. Montel Baseball. Yeah. Julianne Thomas. Yeah. Susie Dan. Yeah. So We 
ask your blessing on all who live here. We ask your blessing on the members of CBH who stand together today. Let them speak clearly about the housing needs in Boston. Yes, Lord. We ask your blessing on our mayor and the elected leaders who represent our members. Open their ears to hear our housing requests. We believe that they too are concerned about housing equity for low-income families. We ask that you be with us tonight. Help us to make our proposals a reality. Our need is real and our faith is strong. We know that you are here because we are here. And we thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce and bring up a CBH power member leader that has directly been affected by this housing crisis that we still deeply concerned about tonight. I'd like to bring up Julianne Thomas. She will address you. Good evening, everyone. I appreciate everyone for coming out this evening. And everyone may guys you guys know who I am. Just to give you a little background, my name is Julianne Thomas. Born and raised in this town. Sixty years. I see the urban renewal call. I've seen all the houses that you have built and the ones that you haven't built. Some of us are falling through the cracks. I'm not the only one. I'm a senior citizen, and there's some people that are here that we're falling through the cracks because we keep saying about affordable housing and low income housing. There is a difference. Some of us are not all being subsidized by housing. I am a senior citizen with an extended family. My son, my daughter, my two grandchildren, and my daughter, we all live together. So I fall into a, a different category because I can't get a senior citizen housing because I have a 17 year old son. So sooner or later, that will be addressed by the government, the state, or whatever, but that because there are older people having babies. Anyway, <laughs> no, thank you. Seriously, just to speak now. I see with urban renewal came. And when the first came, all these there were people living in all these houses. You know what they put up? Parking lots. The one house they put up was Stoke Avenue. Now, I'll be honest, the other day I went around, we have a lot of condominiums all over us. Yeah, all of right. condominiums. But we do not have affordable housing for the little people. Now we go. Okay, and that's my thing for the, for the little people. I worked all my life, but I got sick and I'm on disability. And I don't think it's fair for me to have to give up half of my income to pay my rent. Right now, I'm going to have to pay my rent. I'm going to have to pay my rent. I'm going to have to pay my rent. The rent is quadruple. Quadruple on what did you speak when she lived there 40 years ago? Granted, for the other taxes and income and all that stuff, is, but it doesn't make sense that I got to take up more than half of what I get a month and pay my rent and, and to live on. I don't want to leave Austin because I love Austin. I, I really love this town, and I know there are going to be some things coming that can help everybody, but if you just listen to us and hear us, there has to be a need for affordable and low income housing. Everybody don't make $38,000. Never been 
just live because the winner registered.
developers want to opt out and not build affordable housing, they must pay a fee of $50,000 for every affordable unit loss. This funding will go into affordable housing fund, which will be used to rehab substandard housing and build emergency housing for people displaced by fires, condemned buildings, and etc. The following units or the affordable units must be integrated with the market rate units. A policy of this nature would make history in Westchester. We believe we can challenge ourselves to make history so that our children and our children's children can call this village of Osney our home. Because Osney is our home. Who's home? Our home. Who's home? Susie Dad, and she will have dialogue with our village officials.
be perceived, the Richmond Corporation Council, it could be perceived that we are coming to a policy decision having not had a properly noticed public meeting and we somehow prejudice to the policy. So at this point, I really am very interested in listening and I will give you some of my opinions. I'm not going to commit to a yes or no answer to your questions. I will listen to that. Okay. Can I ask you, may I ask you another question? Could you be committed to our um, public up the hearing? Um, Comprehensive plan is very interesting. 
However, it is not without flaw, and I think that we all know that it, it definitely needs some work. All right. yeah, I just want you to know that the comprehensive plan is not something that's in stone. It's a living, breathing document. And what we need to do is we need to look at that plan and say, that's what we decided then, but where are we now? I, I want to be optimistic, all right? So, therefore, I'm going to give you a chance. I know you haven't had much of a chance to speak. I want to watch this. Really be able to speak to the audience. So I'm going to give it to you. I think this one is great. There we go. Julia. I, I understand the items that you set forth in the proposal. Uh, I guess the question would be, what would be the next step toward having this conversation? You opened it up with a, with a very clear vision of what you'd like to see happen. Uh, the comprehensive plan, as Trustee Cogman referenced, is a living, breathing document. Changes to it are not as quick as those of us who agree with the spirit of this policy just sitting in a room and voting yes or no. It's, it's a bit of a process. So I'm, I know that Julia Soro and, and the folks, the organizers here from CDH, uh, would be willing partners in a process to be able to evaluate this. Um, I know that Karen Tori and IFCA would also be uh, well, I, I don't want to speak for your parents, but you and I have had many conversations, so I imagine that IFCA, IFCA will be at the table and, and, and helping us explore what can work well. And I don't want to underestimate the value of the fact that Quantel Basemore is not only very active with CBH, but also a trustee in the village of Asane. And uh, Quantel and I met a couple years ago, and uh, we started taking walks uh, around his neighborhood where he grew up. Well, where he spent a lot of time growing up, she said. Um, and most of our conversations were about affordable housing. Uh, and I am really pleased that he decided to run for village trustee, and we are very pleased to have him on the board. And that's very awesome. Made no secret that housing was going to be at the top of his agenda when he ran for office. So um, there's only five of us, we each get one vote. And that's a, that's a really strong voice for us to have on the board. Um, were there other questions you explicitly wanted me to refer to? Three minutes that you wanted to make. All right, I'm done. Thank you very much for inviting us here. It's really a pleasure to see so many familiar faces and so many new faces as well. I look forward to working with many of you throughout this process. I'd like to bring up at this time Village Trustee Olet and CBH Power Member Leader, Juan Pelbe.
what are our real housing needs across Westchester County? Um, I'm not really prepared to comment on your plan per se, but I think that we need more housing at every level of affordability. We need housing at the 50% level, we need housing at the 30% level, we need housing at the 15% level. And that is something that, you know, many, many, many years. I would like for us to be a leader in this. At the county level, I'm putting in a capital project into our budget which we're scrapping right now to uh, fund a study for a county-wide level. But why don't we take the next step here in Austin, we're all together. I know we have a very willing uh, village board, town board, certainly me as a representative of the county and all of the advocates here, Karen Victoria, who will be on our town board, who's also leading IFCA now. Um, we, can, we can come together and find really creative solutions and step, step out in front here in Austin to show the rest of Westchester County, the rest of New York State, you know, how you identify and address these real needs. So thank you for being part of that.
There's room for them. This, this, this is what you said. I'm not asking for anything today. You don't have to do it. And this is really what I'd like to feel people. If it's really an issue for you, you really feel passionate about it. If you really say, you know what? I don't want to be one of those people who sit around and complain about it, but I actually want to make things happen. I want to be committed. Here it is, right here. Not asking for anything today. Something as simple as ten dollars. You become a member. I'm not looking for joiners. I'm looking for people who, that when the meeting is called, you're going to be. I don't have to ask you. I don't have to remind you. I don't have to call you. But when the meeting is called, you're going to be. There. You're sitting down, sitting with our wonderful elected officials and that chair, and you'll sit across from me and say, "Hey, this is what we want." Then I'll see you. See, this is about commitment. This is not about the money. And maybe some of you are like, you know what? This is my first meeting. You know, I don't know. Hey, I don't know where they're at. That's okay. That's okay. Still want you to come out to the next meeting, December 17th. But for those of you who are in 17th, 15th, okay, sorry. December 15th. For those of you who are really like, I, I have to do this. This is not an option. I need to be a part of the process. I have to. I don't have any other option. Then please, consider joining. Now, I've been a member of TVA for two years now. Now, you might say, well, why? Simply this. I am a trustee elect. I am a district leader. I know some of the, the power players in the community. But that still does not negate me from needing affordable housing. I still have to deal with the need of affordable housing. I can be trustee elect this year, trustee, but it's still an issue. So that's why I joined, because I knew that, you know what? It's not enough to be a district leader. It's not enough to vote. It's really about truly being organized, mobilizing the people, and, and dealing with the powers that means to get what you want. It's a process. So what I'm asking you today to do is really think about it. Let's move beyond the voting booth. Let's move beyond complaining. And let's really become power players and collaborate with our organizations. As we say that Austin is our home. Whose home is it? Oh! Whose home is it? Oh! Whose home is it? Oh! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want to come up to me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, in the back, there are people who can take your dues so you can become a member. Al fondo, hay personas que pueden tomar su cuota para hacerse un miembro de la organización. So, can you guys raise, wave your hands? Yes, Carlos, Luis, Nadine, they are. Listen, I'm just going to reiterate before we leave, all right? Our work is done on Tuesday nights when we get in these meetings. Tonight, this is a forum, this is an, it's, it's an event that we wanted to voice our issues, we wanted to present our proposal, but if you visit that table back there, and you get here on Tuesday nights, the action will happen, I guarantee it. We need strength. We need you here on Tuesday nights so that we can make this thing happen. We already talked to our village officials. They have voiced it. They, they support what's going on. They believe it. Let's hold them to it. Let's work with them. And let's get it done. Who's home? Thank you very much.